Okay, it's Henry again, and this is the first work in progress video on the resin 1 to 100 scale Mercurius and V8. And as you can see, I've got these two guys soaking in a nice little bath of purple power. I've already done my parts check and confirmed that all the parts are included. And uh, everything's looking pretty good so far. I found a blog uh, a few months ago, long before I actually started this project, um, that it's in Japanese, but the pictures are pretty self-explanatory, but I mentioned in the unboxing video that these kids don't have assembly instructions, unfortunately, but the blog basically lays out everything you need to know for assembling these two kits, and has an added bonus of letting you know specifically what uh, Kotobukiya polycap joints you'll need to buy in order to uh, assemble these things with the polycaps that were intended to be used with them. So I've placed an order for the... I already had some of them. I had maybe a third or maybe a quarter of the polycaps required. So I placed an order for the polycaps that I didn't have. and. Uh, I think while I'm waiting on those to arrive, I'm going to get these guys washed with purple power and then go ahead and start the uh, cleanup process. Okay, so I have uh, rinsed off all the parts and gone in and cut and cleaned up all of the gate marks from where the, uh, the resin was in the mold and sanded the entire surface of the kit. So uh, now I'm right, uh, actually already in the process of installing the joints. So I'm just going to start at the feet and work my way up. i got all the foot parts here. Uh, main part of the foot right here. Uh, here's the actual ankle joint. It's just two halves. And then it's got a uh, polycap socket right there. And then it's got a little polycap here with a uh, peg in it. That's going to move up and down, and let's see, it's actually got two little brass pins. There's a lot of pins in this kit, which I'm actually thankful for, because uh, that's going to end up making it a lot sturdier. So, drill two holes in this back f uh, foot part, uh, put a little two millimeter plastic peg there, so that's going to pin into the... Uh, if I can get it to go. Pin into the ankle joint like so. This piece of armor is going to fit on that peg right there. And then drilled a hole here. Two small holes there. That's just going to fit like so. That's going to give us a little bit of forward and back movement for the foot. And then you just got this little armor part. Again, two small brass pins in there. It's going to fit right there. One really good thing about this kit is that uh, anywhere where there's supposed to be pins, they already have little indentations uh, marked for you, so you know exactly where to put all of your pins. Now for the ankle armor, uh, this is actually the joint here. Uh, there's a few polycap ball joints we were supposed to use, but uh, I waited and waited and waited for all of the Kotobukiya polycaps to come in and they just never got in stock because Kotobukiya is not very good at uh, re-releasing some of their older stuff like polycaps and hands and joint sets and MSG parts and things like that. Really sporadic, really kind of annoying honestly. So uh, I've had to improvise on some of the polycaps. I had like about a third of the Kotobukiya polycaps and then the other two-thirds I just have to improvise with Bandai polycaps or scratch building my own joints. Uh, so for this particular one I've got some parts from the Bald and Arm Arm set that I'm using for basically all the uh, ball and socket joints on here. I do have a teeny tiny little Kotobukiya polycap here. Three-piece polycap joint. And this is from the instructions. It said just to insert it. Let's see, no, turn around that way. And here, if I get the hole to line up, there we go. And then on the back of the ankle armor is a small hole there. 
goes in like so. This particular tiny poly cap is kind of a pain. But anyway, there, that's going to give your up and down movement to the ankle armor. And then that socket just pops right in to the ankle. And there you go. Now you got your feet. The lower leg is actually really, really simple. It's literally just two halves. You got the front half and the back half. Uh, they already had pegs molded in right here. And then, so I just had to drill these two holes and then drill another hole right there for the knee joint to go into. And they just fit together like so. And there's, there's a seam line that I'm gonna have to fix. Uh, this right here is a panel line, but up here and down here, I'm going to have to fix that seam line. So this will have to be glued together, and then I'm going to have to get some putty in there to uh, fix that seam line. So uh, then it's just got a little hole down here. Uh, I'm thinking that's probably just going to end up being fixed pose. I think they're just going to depend on the ball joint for the ankle rotation because like there's nowhere for a poly cap to go and just the way that the ankle armor fits over the leg it's not going to be able to rotate there anyway so that's probably just going to be glued in place once I do final assembly okay the knee joints on these kits are actually pretty well made they got double jointed knees and it's got several parts for each knee joint so Starting off with the lower piece here, uh, they said in the instructions uh, to put a 3mm plastic peg into uh, each one of these, so I've done that. And then you've got this part here. you got two poly caps down in there. And that's going to go right on that plastic peg like so. Fit that down a little bit better. Okay. And then, uh, as you can see, I've drilled out three small holes. I've got three little brass pins in there. And that is going to line up and sandwich that knee joint in there like so. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing for the upper knee joint. That's going to go in there. Fit that poly cap down. And then, likewise, we're going to put these in right here. And there we go. And now, last part is the knee joint or knee armor and just drilled a hole and it just pegs on right to the front of the knee joint like so. So we got a nice 180 degree bend out of that and we've got this uh, hole down here inside the lower leg and that's just going to slot in there like so. Oops. All right, just like that. All right, as for the thighs, they give us this big blocky thigh right here. Uh, this hole right here was kind of pre-drilled. I just drilled it out uh, all the way through to the bottom, three millimeters. Drilled a uh, two millimeter hole here and then some small holes for pins right here. Uh, all these little side armor parts had uh, little indentations in there, so I pre-drilled, or not pre-drilled, but I drilled all the holes in there to accommodate all these little brass pins, and those are just going to go together like so, and then fit on to the lower leg like that. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. I almost feel like they could have just molded this onto the lower leg. Maybe it would have made it more tricky to recast it, I don't know, but I feel like they probably could have if they wanted to. 
<clears throat> but anyway, we got lower leg armor on there. And we got this part that is going to go on the side right here. And it just pegs in there. That's a little thruster. Uh, we got these things, the big side skirts. Uh, it doesn't really fit on all that well uh, with a dry fit. So obviously when all this gets painted and I get around to final assembly, I'm just going to glue that peg into that little hole there so that will fit nicely into place like so. And for the actual hip joint, uh, I did have some of these Kotobuki polycaps. It's a giant hinge polycap. And it's just going to go into the spherical hip part like so. And it's going to poke out through the bottom. And it's just going to slide right into this hole right here, if I can line it up properly. So that's going to go in like there, and that's going to give you your rotation and your up and down movement. And then, like I said, there's a hole right down in there. And that's just going to fit right on top of that knee joint. There we go. And there is your completed leg. So, knee bend is kind of eh, it's alright. I probably get a better idea once I actually get it glued together because it's a little bit unstable right now. But we'll see once it's all said and done. Alright, the waist section is pretty easy, not nearly as complicated as the legs. Got the main part here, uh, put in a little two millimeter peg there, drilled a hole here. Uh, this big old hole is already drilled out, drilled out two small holes there. And uh, we got this piece that's going to kind of float right there on the top. And what I've got here is two small little polycap bars. Basically just clipped a piece of the polycap runner off. It's going to go in there. And in here... Very, very tiny. Probably should have just left it in there instead of pulling it out. Anyway, so those are in there, and those are going to be the hinges for the, uh, I guess, other side skirts. Anyway, they just fit on there like so. And it said in the instructions that you're supposed to, like, drill and put a pin here, and it's supposed to go in this little slot right here, but. I don't think it's really all that necessary, so I'm just going to skip it. But with that little polycap joint, the uh, side skirts can kind of go up and down. It's got a nice smooth movement. And what's going to happen is the waist peg is actually going to sort of uh, connect those two parts together. Got a small little back skirt here that just pegs in like so. And then we got the uh, front skirt crotch thruster thing. And that's going to pin up into that piece. I got a hole. Originally there was supposed to be a polycap there, like a ball joint polycap that was supposed to go right there. Uh, honestly, the front skirts are so small and that polycap would have moved so little. I didn't really see much of a point. So I just pegged it in rather than using that polycap ball joint. So get that in there and then this goes on top like so, and that's your waist section. And then these uh, polycaps for the hips are going to go into here. They do seem a little bit loose, so I'm probably going to have to tighten those up a little bit with some super glue. But for the purposes of this work in progress video, I think they'll do fine. Okay, so now we're working on the torso. Torso is not too bad at all. Uh, we got the lower part here, and I uh, used some more of those bald and arm arms uh, ball joints. Got the socket down there, and then I glued the ball up in here, and those are just popped together, and they hold together pretty well. Uh, glued another one, small one, right there for the neck. Gonna get to that uh, next. And then, let's see, we got the chest piece, the cockpit hatch, basically. 
and we got a little half ring here those are going to pin together like so and then that is going to pin onto the chest just like that and it's going to create a little bit of a seam line there actually didn't really line up all that well so I'm wondering if I ought to just glue that in place and then uh, I'm probably going to have to end up filling in that seam line because that, that's really bugging me and maybe just like have this piece come off separately I don't know anyway got this little bar up under the uh, chin here put some small pins in there slots in like so and then the uh, side parts also got two pins for those and they're just going to line up nicely and plug into the sides just like that and they've got some additional holes down here I hadn't drilled those out yet that's where the uh, weapons are going to connect obviously so and a little bit of uh, back and forth a little bit of rotation there and then I uh, put in a peg here and that is going to connect to the waist right there alright so starting to shape up alright the heads on these guys are pretty simple uh, main part of the head here put a little pin down in there drilled a hole in the bottom of the antenna and that just fits on like so I'm thinking I may putty that up where that connection is and sort of smooth that out a little bit make it look a little more seamless and then we've got these little uh, round detail thingies that go in front of the face like that and obviously those are just going to be glued in once I do final assembly. Got the uh, bald and arm arms socket up in there. And it easily just pops right onto the neck joint. Alright, now for the arms. The arms aren't quite as complex as the legs. Uh, shoulder joint. This is the, honestly the part I had the most trouble with because uh, I didn't have the right poly cap to fit down in here. Uh, There's supposed to be a poly cap that, that's the same shape as this but much much smaller and uh, it was supposed to fit inside this little uh, cylindrical drum thing and what I ended up doing is I made like a little plastic replica of that poly cap. Basically just filled the whole thing with plow plate and then put a peg and then drilled a hole through there. Tried to get that to work didn't really work out so well. The little peg kept breaking off and it was super, super tight. So uh, I had this poly cap and I just sort of trimmed it down and shaved the peg a little bit smaller and basically made it fit. And this is actually working out pretty well. Then I've got a poly cap rod that's going straight through this whole shoulder assembly. Pokes out a little bit on each side. And then it's just got this little spherical part that will be glued on top like so. Let's see we got this thing right here that's gonna connect onto there so that'll give you your rotation and up and down movement and let's see uh, I guess I'll go ahead and do the shoulder armor. You got these little guys right here, a whole bunch of them, eight of those and they're gonna go on the ends of that little polycap rod just like so and then the shoulder armor is just gonna sit on top of those just like that and that's gonna let the shoulder armor be able to rotate like that for when you you know move the arm out and then the bicep it's just got a poly cap peg down here and that just goes in like so now uh, for the forearm, it's actually three parts. You got this part, the middle part, and the bottom part. Just went ahead and glued all those together because they're all going to be painted the same color anyway. So there's a hole down in there. 
and then there was a big hole here put in another bolt and arm arms joint and the wrist not wrist the the uh elbow joint is just this one like brick part and then it's got this little hinge that attaches to it at the bottom and I just drilled a hole through both of those and inserted a plastic rod so that's going to give you your uh, elbow bend right there it's got a peg here that's going to go down into that hole and there you go and then that's just going to this doesn't fit in very tightly as is so that's going to have to be glued in once I do final assembly and then for the wrists uh, just actually I didn't glue these in so uh, because he's got multiple hands and I wanted to be able to swap those out so got the ball joint wrist really good range of movement because there's no like little armor piece getting in the way so good wrist movement on this guy and uh, let's see if I can it's kinda wonky right now but this whole shoulder joint piece just pegs right into the side of the torso and I'm probably just gonna have to like tape these together to get them to stay uh, their arms to stay together since they're gonna have to be glued later on okay had to use a little bit of masking tape to uh, hold the arms onto the shoulders but got them both on their feet standing up I think they look pretty darn nice so now on to the weapons alright so moving on to the weapons we got Mercurius's weapons up first um, we got these little arms here uh, made out of three segments and then some joints these are some of the ones where I had to improvise and use some uh, other Kotobukiya joints I used uh, the Kotobukiya ABS T joints and I used some of the medium sized ones to uh, do some of these. This is actually a little polycap joint from another Kotobukiya set. I can't remember which one it was. Um, but anyway, I just put these little hinge joints in there. I had to stiffen the joints up with a little bit of super glue because I didn't have the perfect size drill bit, but they still work perfectly fine. And they all fit together just like that. And then for the actual planet defensors, we've got. Uh, all these little things are individual and then you've got a teeny tiny little polycap ring and I just got these from uh, leftover Bandai kits and just trimmed them down until they fit into these little uh, joint parts here put those on just like so and they got nice smooth movement just like that and then each one of these will have a uh, second half that fits on it like so and those will all have to be glued in once uh, I do the painting and stuff but all those are going to fit together kind of like that and this very first one has a hole in the bottom of it and that's going to accommodate this little peg right here and it's going to be just like on the one uh, old 1 to 144 scale kit so it'll have this little arm and then all the planet defensors will be connected together like so and those will be able to swing around to the front and uh, be displayed in either the front or the back and on Mercurius's torso here there's just two little holes drilled right up in there and the little polycap just actually I think this was one for this side this fits right up in there and it should be plenty strong enough to hold those up so I think that'll work out pretty well and the shields uh, this particular kit doesn't come with a uh, the little beam pistol submachine gun whatever you want to call it instead this one comes with two shields and there's no joints in the shields it literally the whole thing just pins together so it's just a matter of drilling the holes and putting these little pins and these little uh, minus mold thingies. Doesn't come with any beam effect parts. There's no clear parts with this kit. Then we got the backing here. 
Let's see, I think this goes on like that. And then the fist is actually molded into the handle. It's all one part. And I got two little pins in there. And that's just going to insert into the back of the shield like so. If I can get it to go in. There we go. Alright. So, got that in there. And, like I said, two shields. Like so. Alright, V8's weapons are a little more complicated because they got a lot of joints in them. So I'm going to do the backpack first. Uh, we got this big part. I put in a little bit of epoxy putty here that's actually not even dry yet. Um, <clears throat> fill that in just so I can use a different size uh, drill bit than the hole that was already there to connect it to uh, V8's back. So, big, open, hollow area. This part right here is really super thin like you can see the light coming through it it's that thin so I've been mindful to be really careful uh, it's got a little tear in the resin actually uh, right there that was already like that when I opened the kit so it's not really too visible and it's gonna be like up under an area where you can't even see it once the kit is assembled so I think I'm just not like not even gonna mess with it so uh, just cuz I don't wanna risk damaging it any further but uh, I drilled a three millimeter hole here and here and put in a couple pins there and then we got the uh, main door part really nicely detailed on the underside and just basically it's all pin holes pins and then some pins here all these little uh, thin parts are gonna pin into the backpack door I guess like so just like that and then you've got this hinge part and that pins in right there and then those two holes are gonna line up like so and I've got a uh, piece of polycap runner this is three millimeters that's a great thing about the runners for the polycaps is they're usually either three or two and a half millimeters so you can use them for joint parts like this and if I can get that to line up properly there we go just push that through Let's, let me get something hard I can use like this toothbrush there we go alright And I may have to do a little bit of adjustment to get, actually, you know what, I think I put this part on backwards. Yeah, I think I put this hinge part on backwards. Let's push that through, pull it out. This part needs to be flipped over. Come on, there we go. Now it's going to go on. I think this will work out a little bit better. Push that polycap through there. There we go. Yeah, that, that lines up a whole lot nicer. So that will be able to open up and close. I'm thinking, I, it, like, it's got a little bit of a gap. Just a tiny bit. I'm thinking I may put, like, a magnet or something. I've got some really small magnets. Maybe uh, put a magnet right here on this edge and then another one right here so the magnet can sort of keep that closed. I'm obviously going to have to glue that pin into place, but just little adjustments here and there. And then uh, we got this bar that's going to go right there, and then the other half pins in right there. And just holds it. Oops. There we go. It was a little bit tighter last time I did it. Anyway, you get the idea. It's got the little bar, and then you open it up, and these parts 
are just going to be glued in once I get everything painted. And there's the inner detail for the backpack, like so. Alright, and the gigantic beam cannon. Uh, the actual beam cannon itself doesn't have any joint parts. It's got a little arm that attaches to the uh, V8, but this is just going to pin in like so. Right, uh oh. Upside down again. Pin in like so. And then, uh, let's see, this part pins into the bottom here. Like that. Uh, just like on Mercurius, the handle is actually molded into the hand. That's going to pin in there. This part has got a giant 5 millimeter peg. It's going to go in right there. And then there's a poly cap here because this part is actually supposed to disconnect. And like when it's in storage mode, this connects to the backpack and then this just goes along the side on V8's back. So that's got a poly cap in there and got the little sensor that pins into the top right there so very very large I mean this is probably the same height as V8 himself huge beam cannon I've got some uh, cables Let's see. there we go paracord actually some uh, gray paracord that I'm going to use for the uh, two cables that run from the beam cannon to the backpack and we got actually two uh, sets of arms that run to the beam cannon. We got a fixed pose uh, arm for storage mode. And let's see, where did Vade's chest go? Plug some of these parts back on here. Anyway, you got these holes. Uh, Unlike Mercurius, the holes are offset on V8, and this one, like the fixed pose arm, that's going to plug in like so. And then you've got this little connector, which honestly, I'm um, like just the way it's designed, it seems kind of loose. I'm thinking I may have to adjust that, and that just sort of slots on there. And I think that's yeah, I'm gonna have to put a pin in there because it's got a little pin hole, and then I'll pin into that piece so. That'll go up alongside of A8's back. Or maybe it'll rest that way. I don't know. No, that'll get in the way of the backpack. It'll have to go on that way for storage mode. And then for when he's actually firing it, we've got a, uh, a arm with actual joints in it. Drilled a hole through there, so put in a little polycap rod. That's got your movement on that side. And then this is a little Kotobukiya hinge joint. Actually, got two of them, one on each end. And this is going to connect once again up in there. And this will be able to bring the beam cannon to the front. And then this connects into here. Now the good thing about this is, I mean, this uh, arm obviously is not going to hold the full weight of this beam cannon. Uh, luckily, Vade's arms are going to be doing most of the work. So this tiny little arm is really just for show. I mean, its main function is really just to bring the cannon from his back to his front so he can use it. So that's the little arm that goes. And then there's some other little uh, pieces here. Uh, these parts are there's another one somewhere. Oh yeah, these parts are for connecting the backpack to V8's back. And then you've got some other little parts here. Uh, that's the cable connector for the backpack. This part connects uh, the back end of the beam cannon to the backpack when it's in storage mode. Extra handle without the hand on it, and then an extra little plug again for the backpack when he's firing it. So, oh and a gripping hand for holding up under the cannon when it's being fired. Okay, unfortunately I was really hoping that I could get a shot of both of them with all their weapons attached, but uh, 
unfortunately I'm going to have to glue parts for uh, Vade's backpack uh, that I don't want to glue until I get the kits painted to uh, be able to attach it and the arms are just held on with masking tape right now so it's obviously not going to hold up this gigantic beam cannon the quick size comparison is actually taller than him uh, by about a head taller than the V8 itself so uh, I just got to do a few tiny little cleanup spots a uh, couple of seam lines uh, to fix like on the legs where I mentioned and uh, I will be ready to paint uh, these have probably been one of the uh, more enjoyable resin kits I've built in a long long time they're just so well designed and just really really uh, well made kits that they went together uh, almost as easily as a well I don't I won't say almost as easily as a, a plastic kit because that would that's an exaggeration but anyway they went together really well for a resin kit and seeing as how nothing is glued into place they're holding up uh, this well just with a few pins and poly caps and stuff uh, once I get uh, all the stuff glued into place I think these are actually going to be pretty darn solid so um, cautiously optimistic but I'm hopeful that these are going to uh, hold up really really well in terms of posing and stability so we'll see when I get them painted and get everything uh, finally assembled so uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this work in progress video. I know this one's been long enough as it is. And in the next work in progress video, I'm going to cover uh, all of the painting. So with that, I'll see you guys next time.